I think nowadays I feel like there's such a, a wide gap between the fields of art and the fields of science and that, you know, they're, they're not meant to be separate. They're meant to work together. My name is Patricia Fronda. I have received a bachelor's and master's in music performance. I'm about to start my doctoral studies in occupational therapy. I hope to specialize in treating performing artists for repetitive motion injuries. So in my last semester of my undergraduate degree, I injured myself when I was working out at the gym. Injury occurred a month before my recital, and it was quite frankly really scary. I didn't know how to address this uh, problem, and, um, and I knew that I wanted to start my master's program the following uh, semester afterwards. So it really prompted me to start thinking about how to address this issue, how could I prevent it in, for myself and for others. So then in my master's, my very first semester, I took it upon myself to start researching the prevalence of this, of injury in musicians and the severity of it. And through that research, I found um, that it's really common, but at the same time, no one likes to talk about it because of the a stigma around injury. Performing artists, it is ingrained for us to pursue perfection so that those who can enjoy it, those who watch or listen, can best receive what we're trying to give them. And this sort of uh, pursuit of perfection is dangerous, I think. Um, it is something that no one likes to talk about in this view that it can in end up injuring us because we owe it to those who want to hear us, want to see us, want to see and hear our work, um, to see a beautiful product. And so this stigma is ingrained in us at a very early age because we want to get it right the first time and get it right as soon as possible so that we can show it and give it to others. When I spoke to my primary care physician, she said, okay, well, this is what you can do. And she gave me a splint and she said to not practice so much. And she also said that I should probably stop working out or do different things at the gym. And while all of this was said in good intentions, I did not feel that my specific needs were met and I was not given any advice on how to prevent this further. So I had to kind of figure out how to address this problem uh, for my recital, but also how I can prevent it for myself in the future. My playing didn't change. The way that I approached my instrument changed. I think that I had always just used a lot of willpower to just get through things. And because of my injury, I wasn't able to just play, play, play at high levels of intensity. And so I really had to step back and figure out how little I actually had to do, how much pressure, how little pressure I actually needed to play. So figuring out what was actually needed rather than going overboard with intensity uh, was how I had made my adjustment. The injury wasn't in my fingers, it was here in my wrist. Right. So that meant I had to really understand how much I actually need to pull my fingers in. So I think for me, instead of like, uh, pressing really into it, I became I became really aware that I only need so much uh, pressure or weight going into the string because the string, as you can see, is only so far away from the fingerboard. One, it's not just second finger; it's also first finger pulling down. So, and also it releases the sound as opposed to squeezing. Because if you squeeze here, you also squeeze here, and then you get a crunchier sound. <laughs> like that, um, and that's okay, but I don't need to do that because I can just do it easier with, with just less weight. There are a lot of uh, organizations out there that are about increasing knowledge of 
addressing musicians' problems. However, I think that there is a problem with access. I think many musicians don't have access to the right care that they can receive. So what excites me is that I am going to embark on a new journey of learning a bunch of new skills. And so learning how to ad address and uh, figure out what to do for a patient and make sure that they are able to do their daily activities, whether it's playing piano or typing at a computer or uh, like surfing. So learning a bunch of new skills can will not just help me address specific music making problems, but also make sure that all of my patients can still lead a very meaningful life. Thank mm -hmm. you.